evening. Hi, I'm Ivan Zoot, and welcome to Jatai Academy. It is Wednesday. No, it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday the 27th. It is 9 p.m. Central Time. That's where I live in the Chicago suburbs. It is 10 p.m. on the East Coast. It is 7 p.m. on the West Coast, and we said we'd be joining here tonight at this time to bring you a Facebook Live presentation here at Jatai Academy. We're excited to be here, and we're looking forward to making this a regular staple of the week and of the Jatai Academy experience. If you know Jatai, and Jatai is the American company here that is primarily known for feather products, feather razors, feather razor blades, some fabulous scissors, some other beauty implements, um, Fuji papers for wrapping perms, the new uh, teasing uh, pin comb, and all kinds of, of neat, the little uh, thermal protectors for your fingers for working with thermal irons, just great stuff and innovative solutions and tools for beauty industry professionals. That's Jatai, and obviously we talked about Feather, we know Feather, um, and Jatai Academy. Jatai Academy is our home on the web where we endeavor to provide you with great education. You can go to Jatai Academy on the web, J-A-T-A-I dot net, to participate, watch videos, and learn about Jatai and our products. You can also subscribe to our emailings, which are really, really cool. At night, when you're asleep, the Jatai elves are busy preparing the next morning's email. And when you wake up and turn on your phone or turn on your computer, boom, there it is. You've got an email with a link to fresh, innovative, modern, progressive, and contemporary education. And that's who we are, and that's what we hope to be for you. So we appreciate you tuning in to be here with us tonight, whether you're watching it live right now or whether you're watching this on a rebroadcast or whether you find it in a tweet, because I'm going to tweet the link, or in the email. I am sure Jatai is going to email a link out to this for everybody to enjoy. Lots of great ways to see it. We're going to get into a program. I've got a great program for you and a lot of little side information and other little tidbits along the way. And we're also looking for your comments and contributions. There are members of our team that are watching the program, that are watching the comments, that will be able to respond to you in real time, as well as... Listen to the things that you share. So if you've got a question about some of what I'm talking about, let's have it. Hit me. If you've got a comment, now, I know my hair looks good. Some of you who watch me on video might recognize, yeah, I got new glasses. Those aren't the comments we're looking for. We're, I mean, go ahead. Sure, we're happy to hear you, and we're happy to engage. But if you've got a suggestion for a topic, you know, we've got a list that we're working on of things we think you'd like to know, but... We want to know what you'd like to know, so we're open to suggestions for future Facebook Live presentations and other opportunities. So that's enough introduction. Uh, let's talk about today's topic. And today's topic is working with clients with thin and fine hair. And because I'm clipper guy, I tend to kind of approach a lot of these topics from a guy service focused perspective, but I don't want to leave out those of you that work with female clients or the realities of female clients with thin and fine hair. So somebody poke me or remind me if I get too guy focused during this, but I certainly will talk about guys with thin and fine hair, but I want to kind of take it into the ladies side of the business. And to some extent, it's not even a gender specific conversation. Hair is hair. Fine hair is fine hair, no matter whose head it's on. So set up some ground rules here. Forgive me if we focus one way or the other, but give me a shout out if there's something uh, in a different direction we want to go. But the bottom line is there's a lot of thin and fine hair out there. The statistic that I've heard that I share in the men's industry is that 85%, the big number, 85% of the male population here in the United States, because you could be watching this in another country in a completely different time zone, if you're in Australia, it's tomorrow. But either way, here in America, 85% of the population, of the male population, over the age of 35 has some form of hair loss. Wow. If you're cutting guy hair in a, in a barbershop or a salon situation, chain salon, eight and a half out of 10 of your male clients over the age of 35 
really have some opportunity for you to use the information we're going to share with you tonight. So there's a broad base and application with it. Now, stop, pause, sidebar, let's talk about the ladies. Because thin and fine hair, while it is very prevalent with our female clients, it's also substantially more psychologically challenging, I believe, for female clients. You know, it's not on my top five tips list, but if you've got thin and fine hair and you're a guy, and your hair is thinning on top, and you're thinning the crown, and you've got a little empty space up there, you can pick up a climmer, clipper, you can take it down to zero and call it a day. That's socially acceptable today. Having no hair, um, we're going to have a video in the academy coming up pretty soon on head shaving, where we're really going to talk about head care, scalp care, skin care. Jatai's got some great products in the Healthy Luxury Shave line, specifically for addressing that, but... It's okay for guys to say, ah, forget it. We're going to go with no hair, buzz it off, call it a day. Ladies are not so readily willing to go down that road. So as a beauty industry professional, if you are capable of providing quality solutions and credible conversation to your female clients who either have just naturally finer textures of hair or who are experiencing some degree of thinning, boy, you can be somebody's favorite hair cutter. You can be somebody's powerful quality resource. And you can be somebody who's building business in a very critical segment. So um, when we talk about fine hair, it's so important to recognize the huge opportunity this represents. And like any other hair challenge, you know, I used to always say, you know, the thins want to be thick. The curlies want to be straight. The darks want to be light. And I want a Mercedes. And you know what? That's the beauty of the beauty industry, because every one of these challenges represents an opportunity, and every one of these opportunity represents cha-ching, a ring of the cash register. So there's a focus here on building and growing your business and recognizing how all of these challenges can really turn into opportunities. So I like to go with top five tips. If you've read a lot of my blog posting, whether on my own platform or other platforms over many, many years, you know that I even loves the top five tips format. I think five tips are nice and concise and simple and easy. And I love top five tips because I've just never been able to think of a sixth one. Well, no, that's not true. Usually I have top five tips and then I have a bonus tip for number six. I'll have that for you today. But 10, like a Letterman, David Letterman top 10 list, sometimes that's a lot to wrap your brain around. And I think five are quick and five are easy and five are simple. So if you're ready and I'm ready, let's jump in to Ivan's Top five tips for working with, dealing with, and addressing thinner and finer hair with our clients behind the chair. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's pause. I'm going to take a drink. When you hear me talk about clipper cutting, I always talk about lubricating the clipper, how important it is to oil your clipper. It's important to oil me while I'm talking. Treat your work like a workout. Good hydration. Avoid dehydration behind the chair. Working all day. You know I love the healthy hair cutter tips and things. Drink. Drink water when you can. Water's good for you. Let's go. Top five tips. Tip number one is the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. This is one of my favorite consultation tips when working with fine-haired clients. I'm going to say it again. Write it down in your notes. The less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Well, what exactly does that mean? It means less is more. And in a weird way, it's so appropriate for thin and fine hair. Length equals weight. Every millimeter that a piece of hair is longer, it becomes heavier. And the heavier it is, the more it begins to lay down against the head. And thin and fine hair, when it's laying flat and heavy against the head, we start to see through it. It starts to look more sparse. So I always tell clients in consultation, take a page from pop culture, from celebrities, from people that you see on television. Many of our celebrities that have thinning and finer hair on top wear their hair very, very short. Shortening up the length reduces the weight. It gives it a little spring and a little bit of bounce, and it will look like more hair. The less hair you have, the less hair you should have. The worst example of having very little hair and too much length is that classic comb over. That guy that's really 
hasn't got a whole lot left up here on top and is combing it over the top to try to create the illusion of hair when in fact he's really achieving the absolute opposite and worst case scenario in that you're seeing right through it, you're looking at it, it's laying heavy, and it's just looking like less. So tip number one is we're going to have consultations with clients. We want to steer clients to shorter styles and shorter options. Now, it's good for them. It's also good for us. Short hair comes back faster. Short hair takes less time in the chair. We can turn more short-haired clients through our chair, so there's a little bit of self-serving benefit there. But first and foremost, it's all about what's better for the client. A client with thin and fine hair should be steered to heavier layering. Things that don't have a solid, heavy perimeter. Think about it like a Vidal Sassoon-inspired bob that's really heavy, really weighty, really swingy, kind of hangs together and moves really nice. You know those looks look and work best on dense, thick, and heavy hair textures. Think Asian, think Latino. In some cases, the blondes, that while a blonde might have very, very fine texture, don't confuse texture with density. Texture and density, two very different things. Texture is the thread-like property of each hair. When you take a hair and you hold it in your fingers and you roll it around, think fine textured Scandinavian blonde, you can barely even feel that hair between your fingers. Thin and fine. Coarse, at the opposite end of the spectrum, think Asia, China, Korea, maybe even some Latino, Middle Eastern, uh, or Mediterranean, uh, type textures where you put one strand of hair in your fingers and you feel like you're rolling a tree log between your fingers. You can feel it's thick and it's heavy, lots and lots of cuticle layers, heavy, heavy hair. You cut that heavy, heavy hair into that dense, swingy bob, all the hair at the top is the longest reaching down to the baseline. Boy, it really moves and there's a lot of hair there. If you've done that with a thin, fine-haired client, psst, there's nothing. It just doesn't work. So, Tip number one of my top five tips of working with clients with thin and fine hair is the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Move them as short as you possibly can. They're going to be happier with you. They're going to be happier with their hair. If you've got questions on that concept, punch them in right now, type them in right now. We'll get to you with some answers on those particular questions. The next one, and the next one, I'm going to reference again that horrible, horrible, challenge we have with those comb overs. And in ladies haircutting, many of us were taught, and I flash back to what I was taught in this regard, tip number two is be conscious of the top corners. And I wanna share with you what I mean by this. Being conscious of the top corners. As we age, our hairline can recede a bit, moves back a bit. When I look at pictures of myself, my wedding picture, which is coming up on 30 years old, yeah, my hairline was a little bit lower. I had a little less forehead. Hairlines can kind of move back. We also have recession areas. We have high areas in the corner here. And particularly on our female clients, we can have pretty high corners. We also sometimes have asymmetry. One corner will be substantially higher than the other corner. Not unusual. Humans are not bilaterally symmetrical meaning the same on both sides. It is what it is. We deal with it. One of the things many of us were taught early on in our hair cutting career was that when we are layering the hair, when we're cutting over the top of the head on a client who may be receded and who especially has high corners, we are taught that if we comb it up and cut it off, and we comb it up and cut it off, especially right here, if we comb it up and cut it off, we're going to create a hole here. There's no hair right here that's coming up to that spot. So we lop this off shorter and we end up when we comb it down with an empty space. Many of our female clients don't like to have that empty space right there. So frequently we were taught to do this. And those of you out there watching who were taught to do this, when I show you what we were taught to do, hit the like button, hit that, you know, give me a little love there and a thumbs up or something as your way of acknowledging, yeah, they taught me that. They taught us to do this. They said, comb it up and drop a little bit. Comb it up in those corners, and before you cut it, drop out just a little bit in that corner. Leave that little bit extra right there. Do your layering over the top of the head, 
having preserved that little bit of hair at the hairline so later you can come in down here and you can sculpt or cut or do what you're going to do and not have that void or that hole right there. I call this top corner cutting and in the ladies context we were taught to do it. And as a tip or trick, number two on the list, for working with clients with thin and fine hair, especially our male clients, don't drop the corner. And here's why. I'm going to tell you not to drop the corner because the intention was leaving it there to fill in that space. And our female clients love it when we do that. I'm going to suggest that occasionally with a female client, you still want to do this. But I'm going to suggest that with a male client, don't drop out the corner. Because what happens is when you drop out the corner, this hair remains long in this area. It's an attempt to camouflage the corners. And I'm going to go back to tip number one. The less hair you have, the less hair you should have. If you're following rule number one and you drop out that corner, you're breaking rule number one. And we want to follow it. So I'm going to tell you, bring it up and layer it off just like you would the rest of the hair. You're going to end up creating a bit of a hole. And you're not going to leave longer hair to camouflage through that spot. Do you know what you're doing when you do that? If you drop out that front perimeter piece like that, I call that the birth of a comb over. It is like being in a spaceship, zipping through the universe, watching a black hole implode, and it's the birth of a star. And all of a sudden, you have a new sun and a new solar system and a new galaxy. That's the birth of a star, the collapsing of a black hole. Well, when you do this, when you leave that out to fill that hole, you are witnessing the birth of a comb over. It's a little bit of hair left longer to hide something. A little bit of hair left longer to hide something. That's what a comb over turns into. And pretty soon you find yourself dropping a little more and leaving it a little longer and dropping a little more. And now it's this thin, fine sheet of hair that's swept over the side. That's how these happen. I don't think anybody that has a comb over woke up one day and said, you know, I'm thinking I ought to go comb over. It doesn't happen one morning. It's not an instantaneous thing. It's a slow, creeping sort of toxic, infectious disease of the hair that as beauty and barber professionals, we really want to try to avoid. There's nothing better than whacking off a comb over for somebody and changing their life and getting rid of that comb over. So tip number one was the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Tip number two is avoid dropping out the corners on high corners and areas of lower density in the front of the haircut so as not to contribute to the birth of a comb over, the beginning of a bad idea. Because once you start, it's a slippery slope. And before you know it, you've got 14 inches of hair swept across a bald top and no one's happy. All right. That's number two. Tip number three is to work with texture. And this is where we're going to introduce some conversation specific to Jatai and feather razors and tools. If you know your Feather Freestyle razor, and everybody should have one of those, if you don't have one of those, get you one of those. Probably one of the most flexible and versatile tools available in the entire professional beauty industry. I got mine as a beauty school student literally 30 years ago when they were first imported into the United States of America. I had one with a red handle on it. Um, it's really a treasured possession of mine because the old red ones the handle hole here is a little bit smaller. That's how you know it's an original. Um, I consider it to be a prized artifact. But um, those of you that have seen me with my tools know I always have three feather freestyle razors, at least three with me. And the reason for that is because they hold the three unique blades for razor cutting. My black handle always has my standard blade. I'm going to get in close to the camera there. You can see the blade guard on there. That is my standard cutting razor. My razor of choice for general haircutting when I am making a piece of hair shorter than it is right now. That's my standard blade. That's those guys right there. Now, my detail razor, which is the shorter, stubbier handle. I think these are great for people with small hands that like to manipulate a slightly smaller tool. I also think these are great sometimes when we're working, for instance, behind the ear or we're working in detail in a confined portion of the head, you don't have the longer handle getting in the way of the head, the jaw, the neckline, things like that. So while the detail razor 
as the name implies for detail cutting, I think the compact handle really makes it a very versatile tool. Now my detail razor handle, I'm gonna hold that one close. That one's got the new R-type blade. Take a look at that. The spacing between the guard is wider. You've got 40% more blade exposure than you have with the, and I'm gonna sneak around the side here so we can get a better look at these guys. Uh, the black handle here is traditional, and the yellow, I gotta know where the camera is to show you guys this. It's getting goofy a little bit here. Uh, the yellow is my R-type. R stands for rapid cutting. 40% more blade exposure on the R-type blade. It cuts faster, and it's ideally suited for those people who traditionally cut without a guard. It feels like no guard. Now, in the thin and fine hair conversation, I'm gonna suggest that the R-type blade may not be your blade of choice when we're doing layering, detail work, and precision work with a haircut. I think on fine hair, the extra bit of blade you get with the R-type blade, it's a little too hungry and a little too aggressive. It's a great blade. If you're cutting a lot of length away, if you like the feel of no guard, you're gonna love the R-type blade. But for general work on fine hair, I think the standard blade is where we start or where we steer people. Now my third handle, the red handle here, features our specialty texture blade. And I think this blade here, if you take a look at the blade guard, I'm gonna rotate it slow so you can see it. 50% of the blade is accessible, meaning you can get it on the hair and do some cutting. 50% of the blade is obscured or blocked. You'll notice where you have the points, the double points of the guard, where the two points sit together at their little valley, they don't dip all the way down to the blade. So they, they, they steer hair into that little valley, the hair slides through the valley and avoids contact with the blade, and if you don't contact the blade, you don't get cut. So that's a 50% texture blade. And in the fine hair conversation, tip number three, which is texture and the application of texture cutting to enhance the feel, the look, the body, the movement, the lift, and the behavior of that fine hair, I think that texture blade is ideally suited to the, the fine hair conversation. Now, there are some folks out there that are asking the question in their head, I'm sure, whoa, 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 fine hair and razors, is that a good combination? The answer is absolutely. There are some rules. If we're gonna get into hair cutting with a razor, especially taking off larger amounts of hair or doing more structured cutting, number one, it's gotta be wet. Don't think you're gonna water bottle a client and go after him with a razor. That's not gonna be enough moisture or hydration. Ideally, that client's been shampooed, towel dried and brought back to the chair. I don't want him dripping, but I don't want, you know, don't rough dry him with a blow dryer to take the moisture out like we might set ourselves up for scissor cutting or for some clipper cutting where we want moisture but not a lot. We want a lot more moisture. The other thing that is always a great choice is blade glide. I love my blade glide. This is a Jatai product specifically designed to enhance the razor cutting experience. And for fine hair, I think it's beautiful. It allows the blade to cut smoothly. It seals the cuticle. It gives you great hair feel. It protects your blades. You're gonna get a little more blade life, which is always a benefit for you as a hair cutter. It adds a little bit of light body and, and, and texture to the hair. So dare I say, maybe it's a little bit of a lightweight styling aid to some extent. Um, but great for thin and fine hair. It's got a nice fresh fragrance to it. Uh, I think there's lots of application and opportunity for it. So when we get into working with, and again, I'm not shampooing him, but I'm gonna make sure he's good and saturated. Uh, we started out wet. I wet this down before we got into the video uh, so that the water bottle would just be enough. You know, I'm like a blow dryer up here. I'm putting out so much hot air as we work. Uh, I wanna keep that hair saturated, but um, I'm also a big believer when we razor cut, we razor cut with a wide tooth comb. I call these low tension combs, and the idea is this, especially in the context of men's hair. I believe that a guy's favorite styling tool is a wide tooth comb. There it is right there, he uses it all day long. And I believe that a conventional hair cutting comb with two different tooth spacings or configurations and I'm gonna step out of the camera just to grab a comb real quick. Talk amongst yourself while I'm gone. I'll be right back. Here I am, I'm right back. There's my hair cutting comb. I've got thin, fine teeth and big, wide teeth. Why? One word, tension. 
Thin, fine teeth apply maximum tension to the hair. Big, wide teeth apply minimal tension to the hair. When we use thin, fine teeth, we are controlling tension and distribution. We are asking the hair to go where we want it to go. And I believe in the case of men's hair, we want the hair to go where it wants to go. I'm going to either switch to the wide teeth on my regular comb, or I'm going to go with a wide tooth comb. I want the hair to go where it wants to go because on a day-to-day -day basis, on a guy's head, that's exactly what it's going to do. So I've always been a big believer that razor cutting and wide tooth combs go well together. So when we talk about razor cutting, the two things I want to address in finer hair and men's hair, number one is using our razor, in this case in a perpendicular cutting technique, to shorten things up. I used the expression earlier, the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. So I'm taking this fringe a little bit shorter. We can use a perpendicular cutting technique where we're coming in at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the hair shaft. And again, with razor cutting, and I always make this point when I demonstrate razor cutting, we frequently get the question asked of us at classes, how hard are you pushing with the razor? How much pressure are you using with the razor? And I always like to make the point that with razor cutting, it's never about pressure. It's about position. And what I mean by that is this. If I hold that section in my fingers and I come in with the razor 90 degrees or perpendicular to the hair shaft, I can push on that a great deal and it will not cut. Conversely, if I hold the razor at an angle, laying it flatter against the hair shaft, even a moderate degree of pressure, very light pressure, will allow that blade to slip right through that hair very quickly, very cleanly, and very rapidly, even a blade whose edge has been compromised through use. And by the way, there's a nice little tip for you there. If you are gonna be working with a razor, and you're gonna be working with a general cutting technique in which you're removing a great deal of length, it's always nice to go to the blade disposal bin, get rid of that blade, and go to our blade tray and pick up a brand new fresh blade. One of the things that I do from time to time is I will take a blade that has some mileage on it. The edge has come down a little bit. It's been compromised a little. It's not a brand new fresh blade. I'll put it back in the blade tray over at the corner, off to the side. So when I'm working with my blades, I know everything to the right, those are fresh and unused. Everything to the left has a little bit of mileage on them. Sometimes there's a texturizing technique or a specialty technique or a detailing technique where I know a blade that is a little less hungry, a little less aggressive, a little less edge, will be a very good choice. I can go back to the tray and pick up a blade that's been compromised slightly, still get great cutting, you get great life out of these blades, but a blade that's had the edge knocked off has a slower cutting attitude, it's a little less aggressive, and I think that can be a great thing. So I've gone in and done a little bit of cutting there. We're talking about using a razor to take length down out of the top of the head. The other thing I want us to do is I want to come in with a little bit of a layering technique. We talked about the idea in principle number one that the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. So I want to get this top down a little bit shorter because remember, every millimeter that a piece of hair is longer, it is heavier. And the heavier the hair is, the more it's going to have a tendency to lay flat. Look at the ends I'm getting on there. When I come in with this razor and I elevate sections, I'm going to slow the technique down a whole bunch. I know because we're working off the laptop camera. We don't have the ability to zoom in real tight here, so you can't see this as well as you could if we were working on a handheld camera. I'm gonna slow this technique down. I call it pinching. Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the razor and my thumb. I'm pinching the hair between my thumb and the razor blade. Then I'm dropping the razor down like that. See that? I pinch, I drop the razor, and then I pull the ends off. I pinch, I drop the razor, and I pull the ends off. When it happens quickly, it's harder to see. I make it look too rapid. I'm gonna to try to slow down. But understand, it looks like this. Pinch it, drop it, pull it away. Pinch it, drop it, and pull it away. When I speed it up into one smooth fluid motion, that's what that looks like. I think it's important to recognize, if I just pinch it and pull it, I can pull that mannequin right off the tripod. If I pinch it and pull it, I can pull the client right up out of the chair. We don't want to do that. If the hair is sufficiently damp 
And if the technique is applied properly, we're going to peel those ends away. We're going to get beautiful texture in the hair. Look at the ends there. I'll hold that up against my shirt for contrast as a backdrop there. If you like to point cut, raise your hand. How many people like to point cut? Of course you like to point cut. Why do we point cut? We point cut for texture, of course. But if texture is the goal, you could point cut this guy's hair for the next two and a half days. And you would never achieve that degree of movement and texture, which is going to be so vital for finer hair. Because if this finer hair is cut with a scissors, and we have a heavy blunt line, it's going to fall and it's going to lay heavy, and it's going to look flat, and it's going to look lifeless. So tip number one, the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Tip number two, avoid dropping out those corners to create the birth of a comb over. Tip number three is applying texture. I think fine hair always benefits from texture. And one of the principles underlying this is the idea that short hair is stronger than long. Short hair directs long hair. Short hair pushes long hair. There are many different ways that educators and educational systems might make that statement or explain that statement. But the basic idea is internal to this hair. And by the way, on this mannequin, these mannequins are typically a little more dense. Before the program, I went through the top of this mannequin to thin that top down a little to create more of a realistic thin and fine hair in the front crown area where a lot of our clients are thin. If I left that as mannequin out of the box, it would have way too much hair here for a credible thin hair conversation. So not only do we want to get the length down a bit, so it's got a little more fullness, a little less weight, a little more movement, but we also want to now go in with our texture blade. Now I showed you that blade before. It's got the bumps in it where the hair slips away. It's a 50% removal texture blade. I keep that on the red handle. That way I know which one it is. My regular cutting blades on my black handle. And by the way, Feather has been very generous in providing me with a whole lot of these. This is a sample of that texture blade. The document or the little card there fully and totally explains what that texture blade is all about. And right there, right there, is a free sample of that blade. If you see me at a show, I always have these with me. If you purchase something on my website, I always put one of those in the package, in the envelope, in the bag. And if you want one of these, send me a message. I'm happy to share these. These are free samples of these blades because we know if you use it and if you try it, you're going to love it. You're going to be happy with it. You're going to love the things you can do with it. So please hit me up or hit us up and ask for one of these. I'm happy to give them away. I've got lots of them, and I'm happy and excited to share them. But I'm going to go in through here, and I want to show you a really cool texture technique. So we've cut that. Maybe we like the length we have. It's moving well. It's doing good. But we want some short hair in there to provide a little bit of support, to provide a little bit of a base, to provide a little bit of movement. We want to go in there and shorten it up. We're going to use our texture blade to control how much hair we take, because I don't want to take a lot of hair away, although the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. I don't want to take this guy too short, or I take out too much of their hair. So what we're going to use is a technique called weaving, and I love this technique. Here's how it works. We're going to take a section of hair like this. We're going to turn our razor with the blade facing away. Notice the blade and the guard are facing away from me, up that way. And I'm going to use the spine or the back edge of the razor to weave through my section. Just like we would weave a tail comb if we were doing a foiling or a highlighting, I'm going to weave through that section. And the cool thing about it is as a hair cutter, you control the texture and you control the weave. You can weave big and chunky if you wish, or you can weave thin and fine depending on your desired outcome. Remember, the razor texture blade only cuts 50%. So not only are you weaving away a portion of the hair that you're not going to cut in the first place, but you're also only cutting 50% of what you wove out. We weave with the razor facing back and away so that we weave with the spine, the non-cutting edge of the razor. If we weave with the blade down, we're going to cut while we're weaving. We don't want to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in. We're going to weave that through, and we have a choice. We roll the razor down, and we remove hair from the underside, or we could have woven it through, rolled it up, and removed hair.
from the upper portion of the weave. You can go either direction with that, but that's designed to create some short hair inside there, to create some texture, to create some movement, to create some activation, and on thin and fine hair, as long as we don't overdo it, it's really gonna create a great support system for building up or bulking up that hair just a little bit. It's a stunning example or demonstration of the idea that sometimes less is more. By taking away some hair internally, we're gonna get some lightness, we're gonna get some fullness, we're gonna get some movement, and they're really gonna be happy with what goes on here in the top of the hair. So recapping from the beginning on our top five tips, tip number one, the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Take them shorter. Tip number two, avoid dropping out those front corners and being complicit in the birth of a comb over. We just don't want to do that. We want to take that up and take it shorter. It's a continuation of the less hair you have, the less hair you should have. Tip number three was using tools to create texture, specifically to focus on the Jatai freestyle cutting razor texture blade and the use of the standard cutting blade. We mentioned and talked about the R-type blade, and we said the rapid cutting blade is great if you like the feel of no guard, but it may be too aggressive for some techniques on thin and fine hair. We also talked about tooth spacing and configuration on our combs. Let's take a look at tip number four. Tip number four in our top five tips deals with the use of take-home hair care product. Take-home hair care product is gonna be vital for caring for thin and fine hair. And in that conversation, when we talk about our clients' thin and fine hair, and we talk about supporting and styling that thin and fine hair, I think we've got a couple of rules. Rule number one is we we'll probably want to lean towards firmer holding products. Firmer holding products to support the things we're building or creating. I'm a firm hold gel guy. As an example, this is power gel. This is one of the items in my Clipper Guy brand. That's a firm hold styling gel. I think that's a good choice. I also have a matte paste. Now this is also, is a medium to firm sort of hold with a matte finish to it. Now, as we talk about that product, it brings up the subject of finish. So when I say firm hold products, it's also the firmer the product in many cases, the less product you will need to use. And what we want to avoid is weighing down the hair with a large quantity of product. So as an example, if it's a clay or a paste like this, we can get the hold we want with very little product. Too much product is going to weigh that hair down, and the victor, you know, the, 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 the negative, the Achilles heel of fine hair is weight. Whether it's weight from too much length or weight from too much product, or we'll get to tip five, weight from oil and dirt and, and not keeping it clean enough. So uh, weight's really going to be an issue. When we talk about firm hold, we say we can use a little less product. I also think we should try to steer towards what I call drier finishes. Makes me think my throat's a little dry. I'm going to pause and have a drink. A big drink because I've been doing a lot of talking. But drier finishes. And here's what I mean by that. Firm hold gel. If you put styling gel on wet hair, it's going to be shiny, it's going to be crispy, and it's going to look heavy and damp. But if you put firm hold gel on damp hair, not wet, but damp, and then you blow the hair dry, it's going to have a drier look to it. It's going to have hold and support with a drier look. Now, if it's a hair glue, a really, really sticky, tacky gel, that's not going to blow dry well, and that's probably the wrong item for very thin and fine hair. Those hair glues are really only designed for thick and heavier, coarser textures of hair. But firm hold gel on fine hair when it's damp, blown dry, essentially that's what my hair is going on right now. I have fine hair. I have plenty of it, but I have finer hair. I put gel in my hair wet and I blow it dry, and that's the kind of finish I get. I think it works. Same thing can be said for the paste type products. Put them in dry hair. Dry the hair first and apply the paste in drier hair. On thicker and heavier hair, we might apply pastes to damper hair. And I think if we look for a drier finished look, so the matte paste and the power gel are both examples of products that are going to serve those finer textures better. Firmer holds, use less, look for a drier finish. Now the third item in my brand is classic wax. That's a light hold 
soft and pliable, but it's almost like a pomade when you feel it and when you look at it. It's shiny. It's a little heavier. It happens to be a wax base, not a water base. And so you know what I'm going to say? Fine hair? Don't do it. Not the right product. A lot of the pomades, even the water-based pomades, which are lighter than the oil-based pomades, even in small amounts, generally are not the best choices for some of our fine-haired clients. So making good product re recommendations, and you know, here's the thing with product recommendations. Bottom line, product buyers are more likely to love their hair. They're more likely to be happy clients. Happy clients stay, and happy clients send their friends. So the bottom line is the use, suggestion, and recommendation of professional take-home hair care product. And in the Jatai world, Blade Glide is a service support product. Could it be used as a lightweight spray-on leave-in conditioner? Yes, it could. But the Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave Set is a perfect example. I don't have one with me here tonight to show you, but the Healthy Luxury Shave line, there's a uh, beard softener, there's a shave cream, there's a, <coughs> excuse me, there's a moisturizer. Uh, it's just a great product line to use in service delivery and to suggest and recommend for your clients to take home. And people love the product, and when they love the product, they love you. And that's such a key to client retention and referrals. And referrals and retention are two of the most important things that will dictate, drive, and control your business. So what I'm telling you in this is the suggestion and recommendation of product leads to referrals and retention locks in your customers and builds and grows your business. So a little sidetrack there, business conversation, but good stuff. Top five tips for thin and fine hair. The last tip on the page is keep it clean. Keep it clean. Now, Americans, our culture, we tend to over shampoo. We tend to do this a little too often. We're too clean sometimes because the natural oils on our skin and our bodies are very good for us. However, length and weight the problem for thin and fine hair. You want thin and fine hair to be clean. You want to be keeping the oil off. You want to be getting the styling product out. You want to have a fresh canvas to start with every day. So an appropriate shampoo for thin and fine hair that is pH balanced, that's going to take care of the scalp and skin, that's going to leave everything happy and fresh and good, but it's going to get us clean and get rid of oils and get rid of hair care product is going to set us up for success. That's going to be a formula for happy hair on thin and fine hair. So there's our top five tips. From the top, we have less is more. The less hair you have, the less hair you should have. We have leave the top, do not leave the top corners in. Avoid leaving those corners in and creating the beginning of that comb over style. We have the whole conversation about texture internal for men's haircuts and ladies' haircuts when we're trying to make the most of thin and fine hair. We have the styling product conversation. Firm hold, dry finish, use less product so that we can style effectively. And we have the idea of keeping it clean. And as I said at the beginning of the program, I was going to have a bonus tip for you. So it's top five tips plus a freebie, plus we throw in a bonus because that's added value. And as we work behind a chair, we're always looking for what can we do as a service provider that adds value to the conversation. My tip number six is have a business card whole bunch of them with a rubber band on it, in your drawer in your front desk with a recommendation for a referral for a dermatologist. As a professional, we want to work with other professionals. And you're going to get thin and fine-haired clients, whether it's hair loss, whether it's androgenic alopecia, which is hair loss as a result of natural aging, whether it's alopecia areata, those spots where all of a sudden, wait a minute, why do I have this spot here with no hair? You may see something on a scalp, a client may ask a question, a client may have questions about surgical hair replacement. We don't do that. We refer that out to a professional. A client may have a question about modern and contemporary pharmaceutical options related to hair loss or hair thinning. Products like uh, Propecia, products like um, uh, Rogaine, any of those products, whether they're over-the-counter or prescription products. And you know, while we have good answers and good information, to be able to refer someone to a qualified professional, beautiful thing. 
have those cards on hand, be able to make those referrals. When you find that professional in your community to whom you can refer people, make sure you give them a handful of your cards as well because I've spoken to dermatologists and especially the dermatologists that do surgical hair replacement. And the number one question that a client or a patient asks a doctor after having hair transplants or replacement is, I have hair now, what do I do with it? Where do I cut it? How do I cut it? Who takes care of it? And the doctors don't do this. The doctors need you to be able to send their clients to somebody who can confidently and professionally consult, address, and help someone who maybe for the first time in 30 years has hair on the front half of their head. And boy, if you can be a valued resource to them, Jatai Academy and Jatai want to be a valued resource to you. That's why we bring you programs like this Facebook Live presentation to help you build and grow your business. You want to be a valued resource to your customers. Whether it's the information we provide or information that comes from other sources of education, this is where the business gets exciting, folks, because there's so many opportunities we have available to us. I do want to mention a couple of other things as we get towards wrapping up our presentation. This was top five tips for working with thinner and finer hair. We're going to be looking for another subject for our next presentation. I'll have the date on that for you shortly. I'll be mentioning it in my social channels, and Jatai Academy will also be blasting out that information and sharing it. We do have the Spring Style Show. You know, March is almost over. April is coming. The Spring Style Show is, I think, April 14, 15, something like that. Don't hold me to it. But it's in San Jose, California. Jatai is going to be at booth number 922 on the show floor. Please, if you're a West Coaster or if you're somebody from anywhere other than the West Coast who's coming West, who's going to be looking for beautiful, sunny California, not Southern California, but California, uh, and a great hair show. The Spring Style Show has always been a favorite on the West Coast in San Jose. Come see Jatai. Come see us there. Um, that's a good one. You don't want to miss it. Now, also a little plug on my own. You guys know I've been talking about my new book, Be a $100,000 Hair Cutter. The book went on sale in July. Paper is finally available as of the 1st of March. If you are working towards being a $100,000 hair cutter, please know March is almost over, which means that's one-fourth of the year. That means you should have generated and I'm talking net income, not gross, net $25,000 to be on track to be a $100,000 hair cutter. Take a look at your numbers at the end of the week. Easter's coming up on Sunday. Look at your numbers. If you're not at $25,000, you're not on track to be a $100,000 hair cutter, I want to help you. You can buy the book. It's available on Amazon. It's available on my website at clipperguy.com. Uh, I want to help you. There's a lot going on there. But I want to tell you how the book works. Um, this is your daily devotional to success in the business. I want you to keep that book on your nightstand with the other book. When you wake up in the morning, you read both books. You read a little bit of one book, you read a little bit of this one. The book is broken out into 365 days. Every day is an idea for building and growing your business. There are Jatai ideas in here from my friends at Feather Razor. But every day, you find the day and you read the day. And you add that one idea to your world of what you do in your business. Now, there's 365 days in a year. I have added an entire week. An ex you get 53 weeks, more than a full year. After that's another chapter of focus topics. After that's another chapter of business concepts and ideas. After that, there's a couple of blank pages for notes. Those are your ideas that you put right into the back of the book. But while we're here and wrapping things up, let's look at today. I said today was Tuesday, March 27. Let's look at March 27. I want to give you a taste of what the book's all about because it, what Jatai is all about is about finding innovative ways to help you. May, oh, that's May 27. I want March 27. March 27. I looked ahead and I put the bookmark in at May. March 27. March 27. I'm going to read it to you and we're going to talk about it. It says, choose your weapon. The Match the right comb with the right cutting tool. Oh, my God. Didn't we just talk about this? Didn't we talk about the fact that when you razor cut, you want to pick up a wide tooth comb because thin and fine teeth are about directing and controlling the hair, and razors are about movement and activation and texture, and wide tooth combs lend themselves 
to creating texture. What would happen if you razor cut with fine teeth? Well, you're creating texture and you're taking it away. What do you end up with? It's not working for you. So we talked about that already in this program. Choose your weapon. Match the right comb with the right cutting tool. You need a big gun to hunt an elephant. You hunt a rabbit with a smaller weapon. That's my example. Big clippers require large clipper combs. Scissors, blenders, and razors are best deployed with mid-size wide tooth combs. That's what we already talked about. Trimmers and detailers are matched with small, thin, fine tooth finishing combs. Your work will be easier and you'll achieve better results. That's the example of the tip that was down for March 27. Today we had top five tips for thin and fine hair. Couple of reminders, jatai.net on the web. That's Jatai Academy. Go there to watch videos. Go there to learn a ton of great stuff. Please go there and subscribe to our email system where we send you education. You wake up in the morning and it's right there on your telephone. Um, Spring Style Show I mentioned. Five tips for thin and fine hair I mentioned. Clipperguy.com, that's my website. You can reach me on social media. You can message me here through the Jatai page if you wish. On my website, I have Ask Ivan. You click on there, you put in your name, your email address, and you type in your questions. I answer all those myself every single day. I don't have people. It's just me. You hit submit, you're sending me an email, and I will talk directly to you. One of the cool things is most of the time, the answer to most of your questions is going to be, thank you for your question. Please click the link below and watch the video because I've captured most of the questions in the form of videos as FAQs as frequently asked questions. But a um, ton of great stuff from our friends at Jatai. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you watch this live and you've been hanging with us here, we're at almost about 50 minutes on the clock. We shared a ton of great information. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use it. I hope it can help you build and grow your business. If you like this, Tune in again the next time we do it. If you've got a subject that you'd like to see, we want to bring you content that will be valuable and meaningful for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Now I got to reach up and turn it off. There's the button. Good night.